Welcome to the partners. Uh, Face, yeah, man. Pat, but, uh, with that being said, what's up, guys? Welcome to the partners. The show with three friends separated much. by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I am one third of the partners. It's your boy T, and I am along. The other third of the partners, the Padawan here, man, man. Um, I'm along with with that dramatic pause. What's going on, man? Facing the place, head of the race, middle of the class. I ain't gonna say uh, no ass. Did you hit the Heisman before you said that? <laughs> <laughs> no, almost look like you hit the Heisman. He's still over there doing the Brian Pumper dance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Um, before we even get into the rest of it, man, let's just start the show off with how are you guys doing life wise, mental health wise, just all around, um, whichever one of y'all. Well, I'll take a take a lead on this one. Um, mental health wise, right now in the week, I'm pulling it together. Earlier part of the week, I wasn't doing so well, so yeah, you know, touch and go for me, but I'm here. Once again, you gotta do the practice and the techniques and do what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, yeah, but right now I'm copacetic, cool, calm, full, just finish eating. So it's always good. Full body, full man. Um, healthy body, yeah. healthy man. Yeah. Healthy man and healthy body. Appreciate that good word. You and said what? I said, and we're gonna move around the circle. So Pat, I, No, 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 one? before we go on. Okay. How can we support you this uh, show up or just be there for you? in whatever way you may need or want. Well, as usual, just be open to receive if I need to vent or if I need to give information as far as getting anything off my chest. Just be open to receive if I need. I got you. I definitely. Uh, Pat, you want to go or do you want me to go if you need to process off work? So I know you, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you go, go, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to process a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, This week has been a lot. Uh, I'm starting to emerge Basically, what that boils down to is going around triggers and smaller doses than what it's going to be next week at work, but like so that I can kind of get used to practicing my coping, practicing, uh, seeing if the medication is doing its job. Just kind of practice being around them so that it's not a shock to my system. Um, so I did that. So we went out to a restaurant. Now, I don't even want to smile, although it has some of the best food, period. But I don't even want to say the name of the restaurant because uh, my experience was. Um, so already. Um, Got my family here, so I got my mom, my aunt, my cousin, here, whom I love very much, but their type of anxiety disorder. Um, so that's just then on top of that, um, I've had I already got like an anxiety around driving anyway from SD, but it's been heightened because I have more people that I love in the car, so hyper aware of stuff than normal. You know what I mean? So like I'm trying to act normal, but the whole time my heart is like beating out of my damn chest. You feel me? Um, and then we go out to eat. You know what I'm saying? In general, like I say, like it was like a weird thing. Like it's almost like I had two experiences, <laughs> two separate experiences in what? Like, there was the experience of being with my family, being with my son, him being with my dudes. You know what I'm saying? That's always a beautiful dynamic to watch because grandma. And then, you know what I'm saying? Just having the family around the city, that, that was cool. But on the other hand, it's a lot of people. That they got different. They all dance around in the clothes. It was a lot for the first time to be back out kind of in the public. You feel me? Um, and then while we out there, we coming out of the gym. Me, my, uh, me, my mom, my wife, my son. We coming out of the gym. My aunt and my cousin still in there ordering some dessert. Um, we standing out front. I got the bags of food in my arm, the drinks in my hand or whatever. Homeless dude asked for some change. I'm like, you know, we don't even got no. Uh, so he went on into the, rest, into the restaurant. Now, mind you, just like a younger homeless dude, like about, Probably about in late 20s, but he looked like on that shit, you know what I mean? Pretty bad. So anyway, my goal at this point, I'm already, my spider senses already went up. I already know this is about to go somewhere left. I just don't know exactly where in this situation is about to go. Left. I'm already at high alert. I'm already anxious as fuck, but now my anxiety is going through the roof. So I'm looking at uh, my son and my wife and I'm kind of getting in the eye like, all right, y'all go ahead and start to walk on up the street. I'm corralling my mom, like, go ahead, walk with them. I'm trying to get her to act, but you know, <laughs> you know mothers, man, they be oblivious. To so I'm, like, trying to get her to act without drawing too much attention to us because the homeless dude done walked in the store and he's asking people for money. But through the window, I'm looking at the man, like, the little dude that worked there coming around to about to say something to him. 
So I'm already peeping all this. I'm seeing the whole scene set up. So I know what this is about to go wrong. And we right in front of the doors. So I'm like, all right. So my wife finally pick up on the eye. So she started to corral the sun on up a little bit. She's putting the earmuffs on him because she, cause she's finally picking up. She, she know me. If I'm giving her that ass, some shit about to go weird. So you need to get him somewhere. So then, so she's moving. So she moves up to maybe the next building over. My mom is finally getting the point. So she moved up to the next move over. Now my cousin, you know my cousin. Uh, he, you know, he, 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 he's in tune with the stuff that we in tune with kind of. So he, he, he kind of peeping this game too. So now he trying to get my aunt up out of there, but they right by where this shit is about to happen. So now, you know, inside I'm freaking out, but I'm sitting there with a handful of drinks, an arm full of food. I'm mentally multitasking and like piecing this shit together. Like, okay, how do I make sure that I don't have to act a fool and get an eye on wherever my aunt and my cousin is in this crowd in here? And I can get my son, my wife, and my mother to save the all in the same swoop. So I'm like eyeballing and corralling, looking at this situation. Man, this dude come around, the little manager dude come around and was like, you can't be in here without nothing else. Dude didn't say, hey, man, why are you tripping? Nothing. Just immediately went into the stands like, what? What? Oh. So the dude with the that worked there, he dumb, he dumb enough to be with the shit. So he like, all right, okay. So the girls that work there come around and they like trying to push the manager dude back. But the dude at this point, he done chose violence. The homeless dude done chose violence. He's on another one that whatever he owned and kicked in or that fiend for it then kicked in. And he's he's on a level 11 at this point. Y'all go to whatever, motherfucker. So he's dropping F-bombs at a rate that I have never seen in my life. Like it is. And y'all know I can have a foul mouth when I get pissed. But I've never seen somebody drop this many consecutive F-bombs. And they all make sense. It wasn't just like fuckity fuck, fuck, fuck. It was like, it was a bunch of fucks that was like lining up and making complete sentences out of this one word. I've never seen this happen, but he was rattling. And next thing I know, the girl that was trying to break it up, she turned around to him and was like, just get out. And this dude cocked back to the heavens and punched the shit out of Lord Jesus. Now imagine. The girl? Now, out of the girl, bro. So now I'm sitting out here. He's walking toward the exit door, but he got a messed up leg. So he's like dragging his leg out. And he's walking toward the exit door fast as shit. My wife and my son are like maybe five to 10 feet from the exit door up the street a little bit. My mom is still straggling behind them, still walking, still oblivious. So we trying to get it out. Now she's finally seeing because he's coming out the door with the F-bomb now. So now she's seeing. But I don't see my aunt or my cousin. So now I'm getting freaked out. So now you know my shit is on T. And I'm like, all right, where are they? Did somebody fall on her? Did, like, what, what the happened? Did I not see something? Like, what is going on in there? Luckily, my cousin, again, he's in tune with us. So he had got her out and moved, maneuvered them around to safety. But talk about, like, all of this happening within like the stretch of 30 minutes. So the restaurant itself already got me in like damn near panic mode. And then um, then this shit started going on. So I'm, bruh, it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Overall, the week is going good though. Cause you know, the fam is here. So we kicking it. My cousin has like not been here in like shit a good 10 years. So it's like, this is really <laughs> dope, but it's been a lot. But I'm going to try to go out again tomorrow. I'm trying to get them, you know, figure out something they want to do and, you know, go out. So tomorrow, their last day here. So I want to definitely, you know, take them out. Like, I don't want to just be in the crib either. I want to take them out and do something with them tomorrow. But, man, this public stuff is, it's a lot for me now, bro. It really is. I go back to, to work on Monday. So I'm really terrified of that because uh, that's like the highest of high stresses. Yeah. So we, 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 we fared to Midland, but I'm just trying to take it a day at a time. Today was a decent day. You know, everything was good. <clears throat> that, that's, that's been where my mental, it's been like good and then like, ah, and then good and then like, ah. Oh, not to mention, I got the car full of my family in the damn car, the tire pop. So now, you oh. know, I, so now, you know, 
driving plus all of them in the car plus the tire you know now my my yeah. oh my god bro yeah <laughs> it, it was stressful it was a lot yeah but yeah. but i'm gonna still try to find a positive out of it and the good thing is i got to be out with my family we got to have a good meal to get set at the ml king center mlk ml yeah my little king center with it so uh <laughs> shit, i could not say that for nothing huh um <laughs> So we went and sat there and ate. Um, so that was dope. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, man, uh, we're gonna see what happens the rest of the week. And to be there for me, man, just uh, be willing to reconfigure. Like I, you know, like I said, if I need to pivot, y'all know me. It might be the last minute, and I start freaking out and just can't go. So be ready to pivot. And All right. Oh, man, uh, I still kind of feel like I'm at work because I haven't got off because <laughs> I just just got off work. Um, <clears throat> had a call that got on my nerves, like trying to be helpful or whatever. We found somebody else. So I was like, well, why did you have me talking to you for 10, 10, 15 minutes trying to help when you were going to. <clears throat> so the one thing is there is a mute button. And sometimes I use that mute button to utilize venting. If this bitch will shut the <clears throat> what the hell you been- <laughs> You know what? I don't let you hold for just a couple of moments just just because you didn't piss me off. The last time I got to talk to you anyway, it was a lot of talking without my teeth moving. It was like, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of a lot of... The mama in the choir lost. Why your simple ass on my phone? <laughs> But it's one more day left, and then I get and I get two days that I'll probably feel like five seconds off. Yeah, just, right on I'm, them two days. That moment, that moment right after you get off work, and you don't got to go back in for two days. It's precious. I wish I could hold. I wish I can control Doctor Who time, like get the Delorean or whatever. All right, my shit's falling off. <clears throat> I wish I could get like a time machine, just hold time. For that good 10 minutes that I'm off for like a good hour or whatever. I feel whatever. you. But, but I'm cool. I'm cool now. How's uh, life overall? This- um, it's, it's calming down pretty right much. On. Right Not on. too much. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest headache is work, as it should be. Understood. Whatever. Work is work. Yep. But got a, little, got a couple of gigs I'm working on, the whatever, drawing gigs. Oh, there you put go. Some extra money in my pocket. Yeah. Fuck yeah, put and, some talents uh, to use, bro. Yeah. And then I uh, found something hacked into my damn account. And I called, called like your bank, bank account. And, uh, oh. Yeah. Putting a claim out on it and I'm getting that money back. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. It's just going to yeah, take re- a while. Re- return my ducats, please. Need yeah, that's why you, I say if you get a, uh, you got a bank, man, have an app with it. Keep your eye on it. Oh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Time. No, that's real talk right there. I, I literally, a few minutes ago. Yeah. And you got to check it kind of frequently, too, because they will do maintenance and you'd be missing mm-hmm. something. And then all of a sudden it updated. You'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? What the? What? What? Yeah. What? what you never want to be hit with is what is this? I always think I'm like 50 or 50 or $100 lower than what I actually have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. How can we be there to support you this Man, just doing this, man, as usual, yo. Like this is my like this is my one time I could be myself. Always, man, because you're in the past. <clears throat> Ain't no friend taking a driving, man. Today. You be yourself, man. <laughs> and, uh, we got a little bit of positivity we're gonna bring to y'all, man, to help you to be yourself. A version of we got a little bit of positive black news. That positive you news. Um, we right. got a we got a few stories, you know, uh, because of the recording schedule, uh, it's not much happened since the last one, so it's been a bit of a slower news week this week. But uh, I still got some stories to illuminate the shit that black people are doing, <laughs> experiencing, creating, and just you know living throughout here in this wonderful world we live in. So first story comes to us from BNC TV, and it's about dads on duty, a group of black fathers working to ensure a safe environment for kids. So. A group of 40 dads descended on Southwood High School in Louisiana to create a positive safe space for their children after 23 students were arrested stemming from multiple fights, CBS reported. 
Dads on duty requires men to be on the high school premise from the start of the morning until the end of the school day. The fathers each take a shift to make sure there is some type of authoritative figure at the school. Michael LaFitte told CBS News, he started Dads on Duty because we decided the best people to who can take care of our kids are who? Are us, said the group's founder, Michael LaFitte. Since the group formed, there have been no fights on campus, with one student explaining, the school has just been happy, and you can feel it. While on campus, the fathers become a role model for the children as they encourage school, as they encourage the kids to do their best, tell dad jokes, dispense our life advice, or just be a support system with their presence. The group plans on becoming a permanent fixture at Southwood High School, and Dads on Duty has a vision to spread this organization across the country. So um, salute to brother oh, Michael shit. LaFitte, and salute to these kings, man, out here putting their time and effort where their mouth is, man, and really standing up for the kids, man. And, like, instead of just talking about what the kids need, really going in there and being there. But I, mm -hmm. I think this is one of the dopest stories we've covered. Um, as oh, a yeah. Black father, I really this really resonates with me, like, because I definitely make sure I'm a, a strong presence in everything that uh, my son does. So I, I think this is really dope that they're showing up at their own kid's school to be the – Instead of a school having to go out and get a resource officer or the police having to come in and do some, these dads said, no, they don't need all that. They just need somebody to come in and show them some love and show them that they care. This is the type of stuff that really changed kids' lives when they see black men stepping up and being there. Sometimes it ain't about you even having to fuss. Like, I can guarantee you a lot of them kids are not acting a fool, not because they scared of these dads or nothing, but because just because they need that. They looking for that. They looking for this, somebody to show that they just love them. Super dope. Super so So salute to Dads on Duty and Michael LaFitte, the founder of the group. Hope this does spread around the country. And if you got a, a kid out here, man, go show up at their school, man. Try to be an active part of whatever's going on there. And, you know, sometimes you'd be surprised, man, the kids in your kid's class can maybe benefit from you, too, because a lot of them may not have that father figure to be from. You might be. I know when I go to my uh, son's school, sometimes I might be the only dad out of the class, everybody else's moms and grandmas and stuff like that. So it's it's a, it's a cool thing to be able to be that that model for the next generation. So oh, yeah. love to see the king stepping up. Um, Our next story comes to us from blacknews.com. First time author honors murdered son and then sells out of her books a few days. Dr. Shawanda S. Moore, also known as the tax doctor, is the CEO and founder of Royal Financial Services and Royal Tax Box. She decided to write her first book entitled Introduction to Tax Preparation to Assist Individuals with Starting Their Own Tax Business, Growing Their Tax Business, and Understanding the Tax Process. Dr. Moore launched her book on her birthday, August 21st, 2021, and was overwhelmed with the fact that all the books were sold out within just a few days. Dr. Moore ordered only 200 books because she did not expect to receive such a response. Dr. Moore stated that this has to be a blessing because she has never seen this much support in her life, especially after suffering the tragic loss of her biggest supporter. Dr. Moore's son, Sean Moore, was just 21 years old when he was murdered in New Orleans on September 29, 2020, due to a senseless violence. Naturally, she was grief-stricken and her heart continuously aches due to this incident. She wanted to give up on everything because Sean was her business partner and made her feel like the best mother in the world. Sean had plans on continuing to help in his mother grow her business and wanted to start his own trucking company. Because Sean was positive, helpful, and giving, Dr. Moore desires to complete all of his unfinished goals. She plans to carry out every goal that her son didn't get an opportunity to finish, plus grow her business. She says that she carries the love of her son in her heart and respects all the things her son has done to assist with the starting up the business. She vows to keep his memory alive as her business partner by securing his position as an honorary CEO. And in honor of her son, she has planned to launch a set of financial literacy books for children on November 1st, 2021, which can be bought at thetaxdoctor.com, thetaxdocta.com. And she's also currently working on a financial literacy curriculum that will include entrepreneurial skills to assist middle school and high school students prepare for the real world. So shout out to Dr. Shawanda S. Moore. Uh, rest in peace to the young king that uh, she lost to senseless violence. But I really like the fact that uh, she was able to see victory after that and the fact that she's doing it in a way that I feel like would make him, like if that was his lane anyway and he was going into financial literacy, I think doing the financial literacy for the kids is why she's going to be successful because it really does uphold his. Salute to the doc, know. man. Yeah. Big move. Big teams of one. Big teams of one from the queen. Yeah. 
And last up, this story also comes to us from BlackNews.com. Black alumni from California State University East Bay launched Black Excellence Project. California State University East Bay has officially launched the Black Excellence Project, which documents student graduate success on campus via multimedia and film. Black Excellence Project captures Black students' experiences of their perseverance in obtaining their undergraduate degrees. Black Excellence was co-created by Sarah Albert, a higher education analyst, and Stephen Cleveland, ethnic studies entitled lecturer and history lecturer, DEI Student Center African American Fellow in partnership with Cal State East Bay's Institutional Effectiveness and Research Department. As first-generation college students themselves, Ms. Albert and Professor Cleveland are uniquely qualified to understand the pain points that can lead to student success or failure. Black Excellence focuses on a strength-based approach to highlight programs and factors that aided students by staying on, and staying on track. The project seeks to strengthen support for Black students by promoting a culture of inclusivity, encouraging collaboration and conversation, and informing and responsible and thoughtful action. The project will bring attention to institutional best practices that are crucial to enhance Black student success. Having the student voice front and center allows us to learn from the students' lived experiences on their road to graduation. The Black Excellent Project shows us the work of our Black students and their community thriving in spaces where they feel empowered and supported, as Dr. Cynthia L. Alvarez, Assistant Director of Students. Um, so this program, man, is basically showing young students best practices from other graduates. So instead of you going to an advisor and you basically learning about like, hey, this is this is what you need to do to get your degree or this is what you need to do to make sure that you graduate from this program or this program. Instead, you getting your advice from former students that are have graduated from those actual fields and getting their best practices. So you're getting an understanding from the student perspective, you know, whether that be, hey, this is the right classes to take in which order to make sure that you under had a best understanding for your degree field all the way down to, you know, hey, this might be the best uh, time of day to take a certain class, basically based around, you know, lab access or whatever, or whatever the case may be. But I think this is a really dope uh, program. And I love to see young Black people helping other young Black people. Um, it's really dope when it's within your own generation that you're getting help. So salute to them in the Black Excellence Project. And that is the Black news that you can- The do. Flu Monkey. The Flu Monkey. Oh. Fuck you, man. It ain't no damn flu monkey. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the, it's the aunt monkey who's been here all mm. week. <laughs> <laughs> so you oh, know yeah. what's been going down. Zero, I ain't going to lie. I've been <clears throat> coughing all day, too. Oh, yeah. man. But I think it's about to... <laughs> The clock <laughs> did say that. I thought I was tripping. I think it's about to... I really thought I was tripping. I was like... <laughs> It can't be that time already, but it must be because that's what the clock right. say. Got to listen to the clock. Well, fuck it. Well, episode, it's episode 49. This dude is up. <laughs> fuck it. Episode 49. Good and buggering. Buggering! <laughs> ah! You know, sometimes a good shout can clear your throat. Hey, you just got to get that shit about you, Sam. Baby. You figured it out, man. All right, this this is gonna be a very special good and fuckery. Oh, <laughs> all right. I just want to start so let, this off. Can, can I just get my disclaimer out of the way before you get into the good and fuckery this week? Are you starting it off with this? Oh uh, no, no. Are I'm you gonna, really starting off some with goods? This? I'm gonna I'm gonna start it off with some other things. Okay, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna just say this. There's gonna be a point in this good and fuckery this week, y'all, where this nigga gonna go real <laughs> petty. Watch last week's episode to understand. But I'm going to tell you, I don't care what he say this week. The first 10 minutes of his talk last week, he won't make it. He ain't make not one damn point. You run the tape back. Oh, man. Proceed now. I just wanted to make sure I get my disclaimer out there because I don't want. Yeah. It's not. God damn it. The, we'll get into that. All right. <laughs> Let's start off with some good. <laughs> All right. So it said that a video game. Featuring music and performers of the Wu-Tang Clan is in, reportedly in development, and it's going to be a uh, third-person combat combat RPG, like a I'm thinking like a like a Doom or something like that. Oh, so, okay. third no, third person is more like God of War. God of War. Oh, that's even better. But didn't they already have a shot like that back in the day for the PlayStation? So 
Because I had Shaolin that game. Style. I remember that shit. Me and Face used to Yo, play that got, shit. That shit was hard. That that shit was like hard. I used to like playing as you God. He was Pause. he was tough on that shit. Yo, it was just re- ridiculously difficult for no reason. Like once I got to like the Raiden looking dude or whatever at the end with the big hat, it was like, man, like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never got past that dude because I had to get all the other other uh, Wu members points up and stuff. Well, yeah, they're going to make a new video. OK, <laughs> so hopefully it won't be as I'll difficult. It. I'll play it. Yep. So next on the good and fuckery. Hey. Let me get back to my list. <laughs> but um, Kevin Hart, Wesley Snipes, uh, they unveiled a trailer for a new crime series called True Story. Oh, Remember, Kevin I Hart think. and Wesley Snipes? Yep, Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes. Is that not a weird mix to anybody else? Yes, yes it it's is. a very weird mix to me. <laughs> they both was, I, had to, I had to read it like two times before okay. I was like, yeah, All Wesley. Right. All right. Okay. But you know, um, Chris Rock, he did um, was it Fargo? Mm. What is isn't that the name of the show where he's like he's mm. he's actually doing like a real serious role, pretty much. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh. Well, uh, well, that I know that um that series, I think it was on HBO, but they got like uh, a lot of awards <clears> for it, so they might be going in this direction, broaden okay. his horizons, if you will. Much. Um, I'm here so, for it. Then. I'm actually really the the inner child in me is really excited about this, right? So y'all know the um I mean the the, clax, the classic uh Pixar movie Toy Story, right? Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. Buzz Lightyear, the action figure, right? So they're actually making a Buzz Lightyear movie, but it's not about the toy. It's basically off of the character the toy is based off of. So we're gonna get So he's gonna be actual... fighting Emperor Zerg. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure, but it looks it looks pretty dope. Like it looks like All it's right. him going through like the the training to be Buzz Lightyear. Like he's like in boots. So like a prequel whatever. to Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, pretty much. But it looks it looks pretty dope, man. And then they got like a um they got like a, a black um woman character or whatever. She she got like the same uh, armor as Buzz Lightyear, so I think I'm they actually like, here for. It. Yeah, I, I think they got I, I like uh, like like they boot camp uh co students, I guess you would say recruits, mm-hmm. pretty cadets. much cadets. Cadets, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I ain't been in them. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. I just know because of uh police academy. You would think I would know since seven five seven ain't nothing but a military base on the low anyway. Y'all ain't heard that from me anyway. Face, you might be interested in this. I'm not sure, but Ryan Gosling and mm-hmm. um, is reuniting with the Blue Valentine d- director for um, Universal's monster movie Wolfman. So they're making a new Wolfman movie. Is this part yeah. of that monster version? I think so. I believe so. It might be good. Might so be good. At, I, I don't. I don't like it. I, you know. You know. You know. You ain't digging it. Mm. I see what this movie is like before I make a film. I gotta watch the trailer before I do it. If True. It's, if it's True. the same people that's behind the DC universe, I, I it, it depends on. They have failed me so many. I feel better with Snyder than I would with um, any of the others, but yeah, yeah, you gotta give so, me Snyder, Whedon, mm. uh, Ryan Johnson. Even mm. we'll see what happens. Mm. I'll keep an open mind. So um, the incident that happened in Charlottesville a couple of years back. It looks like the rally organizers will actually um, be going through a civil trial. And jury selection is already being decided. As well, they should. As well, they should. <laughs> they should definitely go through some type of uh, accountability uh, after people done died. Does somebody yeah. get hit with a cop? Huh? Am I making it oh, up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Uh, the, isn't that uh, the same rally? Mustang. Yep. That's the same yeah. one. Yeah. The Tiki Torch rally. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, uh, in a recent interview, uh, Jeezy was talking about a fist fight he had in Vegas, and uh, Jay Z had his back, and he said, "Hove got hands." I believe that. I, I believe it too. <laughs> Hove, people forget, man. Hove like six four, six five, six six, mm-hmm. somewhere in that range. Long reach. I believe a lot of these dudes they forget, man. These dudes, whether they could or not before, like they usually get into boxing when they get rich. <clears throat> yeah. So, like, it ain't just, you know, you just running up on everybody. Like, if you ain't got hands, your damn self. So, I can believe that. I I believe that story. 
I could see Jay Z with his lock swinging, uh, <laughs> knuckling up with him and Jeezy back to back. <laughs> yeah, that would have been crazy. I think it might have been. Uh, um, I think it might have been before the dread. So, like, this was early on, like when Jeezy. Oh, first this is was like when, they were, when he was on first getting the death jam. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been. Oh, that's even. About. I definitely believe it then because that was back when Jay Z was still stabbing niggas. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit more. You know. Wasn't the Jay Z uh, we know of? He won't be, he won't billion dollar jigger yet. No, nah, no, nah, not yet. So, um, in more news here, uh, we're gonna start off with a bit of tad bit of flowers mixed with fuckery before we get into the flowers and fuckery. fuckery. All right, <clears throat> some t- let's go. Some t- so, the game claims he put on your favorite West Coast artist as Dr. Dre as top dog. So, the game doesn't think he gets the go, respect fix. he deserves for supporting West Coast artists during the early stages of their career. Taking the Twitter on Sunday night, October 24th, the Compton Raptor said refusing to be a puppet is the reason he hasn't received recognition over the past 18 years. While noting his mentor, Dr. Dre and TDE founder, Anthony Top Dog, to fifth, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Top Dog know just how much he's done or whatever says i never got my flowers from the industry because i'm trying to do a the game voice because wouldn't be a puppet for the dollar bill hashtag thug life the game wrote you know how many of your favorite west coast artists i hand a hand in putting on question mark question mark question mark just being a good in slash gga was offered Finders fees could have signed in dash in GGAs, etc. I just wanted to see my ends from the side win. He added, as Dr. Dre. Well, yeah, we already heard that before, um, pretty much. And you know, I I, I agree. The game has put on and actually uh, put a lot of the West Coast rappers that's out co-signed for a lot of them. Um, I know. Uh, he basically he did co-sign for Kendrick and things like that uh, much, uh, but it, it ties into what I've been feeling about the game. I don't think the game feels like he has gotten his just dues like he should, but I feel like it's for other reasons, and these are my reasons. <clears throat> <laughs> the game, time and time again, has done fuckery after fuckery. Um, let's start off with the even belly two. If y'all haven't seen belly two, good, good. It is. (laughs) (laughs) Man, it is some of the greatest, greatest, horrible acting I've ever. I I felt like it was just some guy with a camera just, just follow around game in the hood one day. Like they should have just made it a documentary. Like why did you pick belly two? Wasn't that the name of his album? See, that's a bar. The di- exactly. See? See? I swear I should have been an A and R. 15. Uh. <laughs> so yeah. You don't want that's, none. That's that's one of the obvious. Um the next one. The next one. Um, rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle, or whatever. It was a period of time where it wasn't even that shortly after Nipsey had passed, but he started putting out a clothing line called Prolific Clothing. Well, actually, he put out a record company called Prolific Records and then had the clothing line, Prolific Records Clothing Line, pretty much. Posting it up, saying it's sold out, sold out. Um, I don't, unless those proceeds were going to the family or whatever, I just feel like it's dirty to just go ahead and take something, you know, an idea Someone What's prolific had. records? Uh, Nipsey Hustle's thing. Prolific is the tat that's right here. Like got it. Most got known it. for that tat. Got it. Mm-hmm. And then now, and then at that time, he braided his hair up like Nipsey and all that other stuff. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Question. Yeah. Very, very question. Um, other, other minor twerks or whatever. Um, I'm other not going to say the name. <laughs> Pause. Like, what other matter? What? Um, quirks. Oh, quirks. quirks. I, mean, I thought said you said wrong. other matter. Quirks. 
I was like, I might have did said that, but I, I'm sorry if I did. I, I meant quirks. Um, the game. The <laughs> <laughs> face, face, man, face be fucking me up every single time. Uh, all right. <laughs> One thing about the game when he raps, Pat has got a man bag at home. <laughs> Keeps messing with me, man. It's all right, dog. It's okay. I know who I am as a person. I'm the Padawan. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> all right. I will keep going, whether they keep jokes being that, but. Oh, um, see you later. Shut up. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Come when on. the game wraps, man, every every freaking verse consists of the, either the, some of the most simplest bars with somebody's name in it or whatever, but. It's, it's just, I guess that's why they call him the game, because he names everybody in the game in, like, every verse. If he's not in Dr. Dre's 6 4 Impala for the fifth millionth time. Um, it's a nice Impala. He's, yeah, it is. He's doing something like Jay-Z in the Sunshine video. You know no, 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 like, no, 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 no. Time and time and time again, the game Just is seeing it. everybody. Nah, nah, nah. Well, that's an underrated ass version. Man. Jay-Z was coming with some uh, bangers back then. Just and that video it. was dope. That video was real dope. That was when the videos were just awesome. <laughs> you never know what you're going to have that. Yep. All right. So it was a period of time, I would say, that maybe the game has lost its steam or whatever. I would say, um, game lost you, what? his steam. Like I got you. Sales. I, I just had to understand what words you said. Yeah, steam. Just sales wasn't like popping, you know, all the new music was coming out, rap was changing, you know what I'm saying? Like it was between that 2013 to shoot now almost pretty much or whatever. Like um now mind you, he's put out great projects in that time. It's just that people probably wasn't looking for that type of rap at that time. I would say the main, um, the last one that really had got everybody's ear was like the Jesus piece back in 2012. And then mind you, you got the document in between that time, between 2015 um, up to like pretty much now, like we had documentary two, documentary 2.5, uh album called 1992 which was actually pretty pretty awesome um born to rap i kind of disagreed with the cover of born to rap but you know as far as putting music together and picking beats and stuff like that the game is pretty solid with that or whatever it's just he just wasn't in the public eye as much being that that would happen he tend to do certain things to you wouldn't expect someone of his caliber to have to resort to pretty much like <clears throat> stupid shit on Instagram or here or there. One time he made a song where he was pretty much saying, Hey, I fuck this girl, this girl, and this girl in the industry. Fuck Kim Kardashian. I uh, hit it. I 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 hit it, it, it first. It was K Michelle. Uh, um, well, they said, he said, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> K Michelle, I think K Michelle came back and said, um, "It's amazing the the guys that you let." Um, basically, she was saying they ride their face or whatever. They want to be the ones to talk or whatever. She said that, um, and he also said that he took the he got um, Sin Santana, which is Joe Button's ex fiance at the time, and he was putting out an album, but he didn't have a single, and that is the single they came out with. And nobody at that time was really thinking about the game. And out of the blue, he just came out with that. And as quick as it was, like, all right, a sensation for a moment, it just died out right after that. Yeah, because I don't remember. Exactly. And you would think somebody claiming that, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, all these accusations at once that he messed with all these girls or whatever, like Lisa Ray, uh, man, he actually, after that, he, like, Actually, currently, he was on Clubhouse putting out a whole list of famous people that, you know, famous 
women and he actually put out and i just feel like that's some sucker shit like kissing and telling is not a a, a man move yeah, <clears throat> yeah i just i just really feel like that's some sucker shit and it just time to time like it's it's been times where i'm like yo game is going like when he was like beefing with 50 and stuff like that or like you hear game say like damn near 50 to 100 bars or whatever and that all of them had to have like somebody's name in there he was saying some shit or whatever right whatever but he at the same time as soon as soon as you like all right game you got you got me on my good side now he just do some fuckery and it just <laughs> just knocks out whatever <laughs> whatever he was built up to do like and it's just ongoing stuff you. like he's pretty good at basketball he is i, I mean you, you. being that tall i would expect you to be good at something <laughs> shoot he ain't good at um game shows like Change of Heart. She dang sure changed his uh, her heart, you know. Poor movie. <laughs> you petty as fuck. Well. Yeah, man. Yeah, and then it's just ongoing stuff, man. It's ongoing back to back stuff. Uh, and then then I realized his manager is Whack One Hundred, and it all kind of makes more sense. What do you mean? It makes sense. Whack. 100 goes out of art go after artists that had that's like what's the word it's not speculation it's not like i don't want to say controversial virtual or whatever but they'll just do stupid shit like yeah, blue face takashi he kind of like i mean it's probably other artists or what that mm-hmm. he probably managed or whatever but the main ones are the ones that just will they'll do some fuckery out of the blue or whatever, and he will back the fuckery. Whack one hundred is a weirdo. I'm gonna say that yeah. right now. I'm not, and I don't mean that on no tough guy shit. I mean that on some just the way he moves to be such a gangster, quote unquote. He definitely makes some questionable decisions, and he stands on mm-hmm. God bless him. He attaches himself to some fuck shit. Questionable. No, no, no. Young questionable. He attaches himself to some revenue building individual. Who are on the outskirts of normal society, but who are the main scheme of the new subculture. You feel me? And he's being he's an old school dude, but he has the wisdom and foresight to see that I see what these knuckleheads is going. I see what the money is doing. I attach myself to them in a business aspect. I'ma eat off their foolishness. I ain't gotta be down with it. I just gotta be able to speak on it. If I'm asked about their foolishness to a certain degree, but I still got my own mm-hmm. shit, I stand. But the foolishness they do, it's still gonna give me my percentages too. It, he like that everything. foolishness. He'll be yeah, back in yeah. that shit talking about Takashi gangster for snitching and shit. Like that's a weirdo <laughs> shit. That, like that's, I ain't, that's, I ain't, yeah, I, I'm up. with telling if you a citizen. Like you do some wild shit with me, I'm snitching on your ass right because I ain't involved in nothing. However, mm-hmm. in my past. When I was involved in uh, nonsense, I ain't saying shit. Exactly. How dare I tell on somebody exactly. else who's doing the same shit I'm doing? What kind of bullshit is that? Mm-hmm. Exactly. If I was the one what dumb enough to get caught, well, that? that's my L. I ate that. That's part of going in the game. So, like, you ain't about to tell me you' supposed to be some OG nigga, and then you' gonna sit sit there and call a, a snitch a gangster. Like that shit don't exactly. vibe. And then you were like. You, you could be a blood working with a crip. I ain't tripping off that. I ain't set tripping at all. But what you can't be doing mm-hmm. is uh, out here backing this weirdo shit that Blueface be doing. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm I'm not jacking that. Yeah, I, I'm not with the rappers Wack that, doing some wild you know, shit. don't be rapping. That don't be on beat rapping. Oh, I ain't with all that. <laughs> I ain't even tripping off his styling or whatever. I'm just more talking about the weird shit he be doing outside of that reality show shit. Or he be... Yeah, he'd be doing like be doing way, way, way. But yeah, dude, dude, those are the main reasons why I, I feel like the game be just be doing too much fuckery, man. Way, way too much fuckery. You the major point, Very brother. Much. I don't have much of a rebuttal, but I will say this: next time Man. before you make a statement like that, have a list like this because uh, I want my ten minutes back from last week. Yeah, definitely. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. At that time, <laughs> at the time, it was late. I, I was down on my last, this shit last week and saved us a whole conversation. Yeah, I had to gather information and stuff because I knew, you know, what I'm saying that it was a lot. But yeah, he had a point to prove. Yeah. He damn sure did. Nigga I put know, way I, I more like, work into this than he did them plants on another planet. Still, still, 
still it might be a possibility. <laughs> it might be a possibility. Oh, I'm glad you've come around to the normal stance of things. It might be a possibility. Thank you. Might be a possibility. Thank you for That's backing fun. off that definite. You know, we there is some other fuckery that we just didn't touch on last week or whatever. Pause mm -hmm. or whatever. <laughs> it might be too late for it, but um, I just saw this. I I just saw this post or whatever, and it just made me laugh. Uh, bless the child. Um, the woman said, <laughs> the woman said, we are built special. And in that, in that picture was, um, what's his name from family matters? Dennis Mc Daddy, what is his name? Huh? Oh, you talking about Eddie Winslow, Winslow and, uh, well, Eddie Winslow. Transgender yeah. woman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dennis. All right. So we might have to flip some things around here cause that's going to lead right into my, <laughs> um, Eddie Winslow. Eddie Win. Just say you like trans. Yeah, man. 2021. Sure, Mr. C did it. Ain't nobody tripping like what do you think? Yeah, Mr. Mm -hmm. C said it and he's still out here DJing and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody still look at like him. You would be all right. everybody, but everybody looked at him different the first time. You know my thing is like uh, unless you came across as a gangster or something and you was trying yeah, to perpetuate true. this yeah. image where you hated him or some or some weirdo shit. Ain't nobody mm -hmm. tripping out. Like, do what you do, but don't keep coming, don't keep getting. What you ain't gonna tell me is that it won't nothing going on, and you was kissing this 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 transition. You're not gonna tell me that nothing was going on. Oh no, my that, brother. That, and you got a and you got a woman, so that means that you was treating this woman like your side chick. You the pictures came out, and now you embarrassed. And you trying to go back? Don't do don't do that. Don't do that. Let that that woman like that. That transgender Whatever woman said she she you you was loving on her. Now say you was. Uh -huh. Don't lie. You was kissing on the Say woman in the middle of the video, you. like literally humping her her butt. And wh what? You Say can't. It ain't no ducking special. that. It ain't no ducking that. I don't give a damn if you do get on there with Harriet talking about you ain't did nothing. No, you did something, bro. Some something won't right. What a what a if you a heterosexual bro. man and you kissing on a heterosexual binary, whatever they whatever the word is for the just a regular biological woman that's heterosexual like me, and that's it. You kissing on her and you got a fiance. You already did wrong. Then on top uh -huh. of that, it's a transgender woman and you trying to act like you won't doing nothing with her. No, you was doing something like at least admit to like, no, well, we was kissing. That wasn't part of the photo shoot. The photo uh -huh. shoot pictures did not come out. That was part of the after party. Uh -huh. He was dipping in that sauce, got lost, and and, yeah. and and got to wandering. That's what happened. We ain't about to play With this game. Around. Like video, video, uh -huh. like Everybody got a video. And this is not the first time. time. We, we saw what happened. And this is not the first time. That was that real devil was having a question. So, could he be trying to lie to uphold his reputation as an upstanding member of the Family Matters cast? Because he knows if his truth that comes out, he, they're going to ostracize him like they did Judy when she became a porn star. No, because I think the difference between him and Judy is, for one, he had a stronger bond with them because he was on the show long. Like, Judy was on there for, like, a season or so, and then she mm -hmm. was out of there. So they, you know what I mean? They didn't they didn't grow with each other as long as he did. For mm -hmm. two, I think a lot of her shit was she tried to do that shit on the low, and that shit came out. Like, I feel like if you get out in front of your shit and you just admit your truth, it's mm -hmm. harder to weaponize that shit against you because, like, it, it's like... I've already said I did it. Okay. <clears throat> like once you, you like, like the like a lot of this shit stem from people wanting to hurt you. So like mm -hmm. if they think it's gonna hurt you, they're gonna say it. So that's why they fucking with them. But if you come out and be like, yup, I like this, this I'm, I'm into it, I'm whatever sexual, I'm into women and transgender women, and this is what mm -hmm. I do, and this is my lifestyle, mm -hmm. I feel like they will probably support them just because in 2021, like yeah. people. To yeah, be honest before. with you, it's it's sections of people because you got fringe people in every group. You got the crazy right wing people. You got the crazy left wing people. You got the crazy religious people. You got the crazy non religious. Like you got all these crazy little groups. But the general population don't really give a damn. Not at all. I know What's I making don't. you look stupid <laughs> is you trying to play all of us you? as we dumb. And this <laughs> lady said that you was kissing on her and that y'all had a thing. And you saying you didn't, but the video clearly shows you dry humping the fuck out of her and and kissing mm -hmm. her and and all that. So if it wasn't a thing, then what was it? Because you're mouth. right, your yeah. fight, your fiance gonna want some answers. <laughs> I don't care what she, mm -hmm. is. your fiance gonna want to know what was you doing? Because you, it's hard not to, it's hard to explain that. 
That won't no movie scene. That won't no nothing. That was a, a after party from a photo shoot, and you got sauced up and got into it, and you didn't know that video was coming out, and now you stuck. That's mm-hmm. what we looking at. Like people got to start telling the truth. Like shit is what it is. Mm-hmm. And this is not the first time you got caught. <clears throat> After the second, man, you, know, you better learn from um, Mr. C, God dang it. You need to go on Mano's podcast and say that you just like that, <clears throat> what you do. Because she said, y'all built special. And I'm like, <laughs> I bet y'all are built y'all special. Built special. <laughs> we built special. Yeah, I don't built even special, know what that right? means. Like, you built you built like a bag of laundry? You got bad, <laughs> you got bad, bad fitness? You I built dang, special. I don't know. <clears throat> she built herself. So, hey, I'm going to leave it alone. But that's what she said. <laughs> what else you got in the good and fuckery this week, Pat? No, that's the end of the good and fuckery for this week. <laughs> we can just end it right. There. That was a lot of fun. Good, 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 good. Well, I tell you what, man. After that fuckery, uh, I need a palate cleanser before I go into this topic. Uh, I think it's time for us to face the screen. Uh, wow. When you need something to watch, when you need some good uh, entertainment, man. Face always come through with the big picks and the, and the big convos on your, your latest TV shows and movies. So without further ado, let us get ready to face the screen. <laughs> like I did that face, 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 face. the screen. <laughs> Man, he over there doing the robot. <laughs> but yeah, um, we're going to end out the month of October um, with my top horror franchises. Top horror franchises. No particular order, but we're going to go um, we're going to go through, being that he has a new movie coming out um, soon, I don't know if it just recently came out or was about to come out, the new Michael Myers Halloween movie. Um, yeah, I think it did came out. Is this continuation of that last one where with Jamie Lee Curtis? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So I think this one, the whole town rallies to try to kill him. You feel me? Um, long franchise. Long <laughs> franchise. Try what you can. Set him on fire. Shoot him. Stab him. Whatever. Hit him with a bus. Impale him. He keeps coming back. Great, great villain. Great, great villain, man. Great villain. He might be the scariest one, too, because uh-huh. in the first one, when you see what he really is, he's really just a regular ass person that's crazy <laughs> as fuck. So for you to be able to, like, for him not to be like some supernatural <laughs> demon or no dream <laughs> monster or no ghost that they came back from slavery town like he just a regular dude that's just fucking people up like that's creepy as hell mm-hmm. like you burning a regular dude and he eating that shit like no. the next that one. means somebody can be be well, michael Myers, for face. real right this next one's often compared to michael Myers. going with the jason franchise true okay now, see, Jason yes, make, make a little more sense to be scared of him because he's definitely a uh, he, he. He's become supernatural now. Now he's a demon and everything. My favorite one is Jason comes to New York or Jason comes to Manhattan, whatever the name of it was when he went to New York. I never saw that one. What? You know what my favorite one is, and everybody else hates it, but Jason X when they was in space. <laughs> <laughs> also, I also like Freddy know. versus Jason. I, I fuck with that. Fuck with that. I do too. Oh. Long <laughs> okay, I redeemed myself a little bit. That nigga gave me the stank face. I feel like that was a that movie was long overdue, man. They should have ended it by Jason. Yeah. But to my next one, the Freddy franchise. You feel me? Yeah. You follow this guy. Just got, got him coming. Freddy franchise. Everybody knows Nightmare on Street, man. Everybody. Freddy knows and Chucky gave me my first nightmares from a movie. That nigga was scary. Lock your door. Everybody was used to be scared of Freddy, man. What? Yep, me. Now he he's now he's the funniest out of all of them. Exactly. Freddy quick as shit. <laughs> Freddy quick as shit. Freddy was saying some shit. And he showed up you on the party one time. He's most entertaining because <laughs> he actually talked before he killed you. The rest of them be all quiet when they fucking you up. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, but you <laughs> screaming. At least he gives you some 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 comedy relief on the way out as you get yeah. slaughtered. Now the next one, I feel. Was the the most frightening out of all all of them? The name, the Hellraiser franchise. Pinhead. Yeah, that shit was scary. Pinhead and all the other maleficent things. <clears throat> I like Pinhead, man. Pinhead, I with me. Don't fuck with that little square game, man. Don't fuck with that little box. You fuck with that little box. It's a, the, uh, what they call that shit? The, out, the some configuration. The, out, the I don't know what the fuck. I shot Google. Never fuck with it. Damn. Um, the late the layman configuration. 
I, I go if I go into a building and I see that shit, I'm leaving the building, I'm leaving the city, and uh ain't no time for that shit. No time for the hell raising shit. Nah. But that's that's see, I'm one of them like, people though. Like if I see some shit that don't look like like ain't nobody tell me to mess with it, I ain't got no reason to mess with it. It's just there. Like let me leave it alone then. It ain't mine. The Lamet oh. configuration. Yeah, yeah. okay, the, the Lamet configuration. Yo. Here we go. I ain't fucking with it. And configure your ass. I got to end the last one with one of my favorites, not the series, but my mm. favorite, the Candyman franchise. You feel me? It's, it's a longer fr- longer running franchise that people do realize. They got at least four or five movies in their franchise and just came out with another one this year, man. So it's keep coming. I'll just be honest, man. That well, that one right there is probably the one that has messed with kids most, just because more kids went out after the movie mm-hmm. and did shit in their own mirrors and shit and freaked themselves out by a shadow or something. Uh-huh. That's around with that, you know what I mean? So like, I feel like that one has stood the test of time more <laughs> off of just the legend of it because it has less movies mm-hmm. than these other franchises, but it's probably affected oh, more yeah. kids. Less than movies, than- but. Yeah, I think they got a longer reach. You feel me? The, the Candyman friends got a longer reach. Yeah, it's Candyman is like Bloody movie. Mary now. Like, it's just an urban legend. <clears throat> but urban nothing legend. scarier than Leprechaun. Even if you don't know about Yo, Leprechaun is tell you what the movie is. Oh, yeah, tell from the hood, goddamn. Ooh, Leprechaun oh, in the hood. Oh, Leprechaun oh, in part three. The real two T. Part three. What, Leprechaun three? No, Tales from the Hood. I didn't know it was a part two to that. Yeah, t- part two don't part two it don't, it don't hit on that much, but part three, yeah, part three didn't that. Oh, you got it. You done gave me something to look up this week. Part dum, two, dum, is, dum. part two, no, that was a thing. Man, oh, part two <clears throat> is not where at, at, at all. Is it about the same part dude, three? Rusty Cundy? No. Nah. Oh, they got rid of him. That's mm-hmm. why it's, 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 it's the same type of premise, but. The overall, pre- yeah, part two now. Okay. Part three, yeah. Part three. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm about to check them. Runners up. There's runner ups. The Phantasm um, franchise. Long, long. I don't know franchise. what that is. Phantasm. Oh, man. Yeah. It's about, um, what's about a cemetery worker? It's about a cemetery worker. Uh, it's tall. It's, it used to be the call. It's called a tall man. A tall, white, goofy, like goofy looking, grim looking old white dude. Do some crazy shit. Hmm. Okay. Look up some people on YouTube. And it, 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 it'll have you like, yeah, it'll have you like, like, what the fuck? Um, the Warlock series, the Warlock franchise. Um, I feel like I've heard of that, but I don't know yeah. what it is. Mm-hmm. It was like sci-fi, magic, and horror mixed together. The Warlock franchise. I remember that. Warlock. I remember that, I believe. Oh, yeah. If you like cartoons, you can just specifically go to the Simpsons, the Trees, the, trees, the Horrors episodes. Every, every Halloween, you know what I mean? If you want to consider that themselves, Classic. those episodes of the franchise, because they do that. You know, I tell you, you what, what that Chucky Frank. <sighs> yes. True. He, he he won't go nowhere. He d- doesn't go nowhere. He done got married. He came back, had kids. <laughs> He's been burned, Chucky. chopped up. Melted, up, shot. Thrown down. Everything. And he's still Everything. there. He still keeps coming fucking. Yeah, man. People don't give him his, his, his just They don't give him his flower dessert. I'd pay to see him and Freddy Krueger have a roast off. Like a roast. Where they just joke on oh, that shit. Mm. Like, because they both like the funniest of the horror villains. They the two that'll fuck um, you up while they, while they had you laughing. Okay. So, Bill, we're talking about the screen right now. I just want to make something clear because a lot of people have this misconception about this franchise. The Frankens- Frankenstein franchise. Frankenstein was the doctor who created the monster. Yeah. Frankenstein yeah, yeah, is yeah. not the Frankenstein's monster. monster. He's the yeah. Yes, he's the creature. Please stop calling the creature Frankenstein. I know it's easy to be to get, get it messed up. I understand because most everybody does it. But if you watch the movie, if you know anything about books, anything about that specific franchise, please give the doctor his name, Frankenstein, and the creature his name, the creature. And make sure y'all try Frankenberry cereal. It is really good. And that's all I got this week for Face the Screen, baby. Indeed, indeed, man. <laughs> y'all have a spooky Halloween. Halloween is coming up this weekend here. So I hope all y'all have a very safe and spooky COVID-friendly. Find something to do that won't be a super spreader, please. Um, but yeah, like man. Shout uh, out to all the Velmas, all the Velmas that's going to be out this Halloween because I think Velma is the new Harley Quinn now. 
Um, <laughs> Velma from Scooby Doo. Velma. Yeah, yeah, Velma. Wow. Everybody's dressed. Jinkies, you Velma. talking about? Yeah, they done made Velma thick instead of fat now, and then <laughs> so all now everybody's dressing up as Velma. Well, Jinkies, <laughs> then. Oh, head then. Exactly. Velma. Velma. Now we know. Now we know what Shaggy was. Doing. All yeah. right. They done made Damn. Velma thick like Velma from Good Time. Mm-hmm. Who saw it coming from? Uh, and uh, I don't really have no segue for this next topic. I, def- I definitely want to just jump to it and talk about it. Um, Dave Chappelle stunted <laughs> and the conversation and backlash from the Closer special. Um, what do y'all think about his response to <laughs> the Netflix-, Netflix backlash? And then I got some other questions I want to dig into. Yeah. What, what are just your overall opinions for that special? Spot on. I think it was spot fucking on. Same don't way. bend, don't bend, don't budge. You feel me? He said what he said and he stayed behind it. I mean, we all know he's a comedian, but we all know at the end of the day what the, the real message was if you watched the whole thing. Most people who had this anti-opinion didn't watch the whole piece of art. You looked at it to try to pull something out to try to get offended by, you feel me? But at the end of the day, we got to look at who are the they we keep saying are doing this. But that's later on in the conversation. But as far as his response, I feel like I said it was spot on. You feel me? Like what he said about, like I said, how can I phrase it? How he articulated his stance against why they were upset. I can respect it. Who can't respect it? You feel me? Like it's not malicious. Nothing I said was malicious. Right. If again, if you watch, so if you ingest and digest that whole piece of art, you can tell what it was. If you heard that last, this that last second, what could you say he said? How could you take anything malicious? If equality is what you want, you must be willing to be treated as equal, not special. That's the that's the main thing, man. It, it, people getting that twisted. You want equality, or you you preach equality, but that's not what you want. You want special. You want higher than because if you truly want an equal when a joke came you run with it because you laugh at the jokes about the other people or if you black. Can laugh about a black joke <laughs> you can laugh about a trans joke you can laugh about, if you laugh about mm-hmm. a gay joke you can laugh about a white joke it's a joke if it's not it, it, every joke ain't for everybody every comic ain't for everybody but if you choose to continue to try to digest my material is it me or is it you looking to try to be offended to try to have an issue Right. To try to, to try to try to make a point. But you can't make a point when I'm constant on everything I do. And my consistent point haven't been about you or your movement. It's about to have been about this other thing. Right. But instead of focusing on what my main point is, you can to try to divert it to something else and make the beef about something it's totally not about. Instead of looking at the main point and the main issue and the main people that my rhetoric is about. That's not done. So they uh, I feel like they're trying to NFL Colin Kaepernick, Dave Chappelle. Like, you know how Colin Kaepernick, he protested by, you know, kneeling um, against police brutality. And then they made it something totally something else. Like, um, he's disrespecting the flag. He's disrespecting veterans. He's disrespecting. They made it something totally the fuck else. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. funny. It's funny how... They're doing the same exact thing that they, they're doing the same exact thing as the people that claim are also oppressive. Mm-hmm. Like they're doing the same exact thing. You can go on a big, a uh, bit more or whatever. And, um, matter of fact, before I say all that, the main point of it was when we wake up in the morning, all three of us, we, we don't put our minority on. We don't put our minority away. It's not like we can put our minority in a box somewhere when it gets a little too difficult to wear the minority. Like rain, sleet, hail, snow, sleep, work, you know, vacation. The minority is on. We don't get a break from it, whatever. What Dave Chappelle is saying that when it is convenient to take that minority off and use the privilege they also have or whatever, <clears throat> see, you, you like, how you say, no, you're not biracial or whatever. You're like bi societal, like you're, you're privileged and you're minority at the same time. And you just pick when you can do the minority or whatever. 
And and that's the main point of it. Like he's not even talking to trans people or whatever. I even seen um I seen um black I seen a a black gay person say that yeah, there's some racist gay white people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they don't they don't put up the point, they don't bring up the point where all right, if this person if this gay person was a black gay person or whatever, they wouldn't have called the police. When you are a minority minority, you have the option to call the police, but you don't have you don't have the security the majority has, the privilege has when they feel like they can call the police. So as far as stance, as far as the um the backlash and everything, it was perfect, man. He's not backing down. And and that's the main thing I think needs to happen, like or whatever, like is getting to a point where the cancel culture is acting like they're the rebels against the the system or whatever, and they're turning into the system, pretty much. Like, you know how on Demolition Man, he woke up and everything is all polite and you can't be, you can't cuss, you can't do nothing? That's what the cancel culture is going to end up being, pretty much, if they, like, take over and whatnot. Y'all going to have to cuss in a thing so y'all can wipe your ass when you take a shit after a while. Fucking around with the cancel culture. Three seashells. The um, three seashells. I, I would say, I mean, no, I don't. All right. the way I feel about it is, for one, I definitely agree with you. I love the fact that he took a stand and just said, look, I know what I meant by what I said. I know the words I chose to use and what I said. And what y'all are accusing me of is not what I actually, so I'm not about to sit here and let y'all monopolize or force me into a conversation that's not even the real conversation that needs to be had. Now, we'll meet with y'all. If y'all want to discuss something so we can get a solution, because I don't have no problem with that. But what you're not going to do is bully me. And I feel like that's the big con- that's the big mm-hmm. conversation this backlash is showing, like that LGBTQI community plus community, whatever the, the that that community has a history Alphabet. lately of like going past fighting for their own rights. But they're more trying to stifle the rights of other people. Not for the violence that people are doing. And that's the scary part. He's basically saying, stop bringing this into equating people not agreeing with your lifestyle to people beating and killing and raping and pillaging my people for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's not the same. Yes, there is violence among trans people and it's rising in the past year. However, Dave Chappelle making a joke about you not equating your struggle to ours and how your struggle is its own thing, but you can't keep forcing people into a belief system and how you are becoming the oppressor. That has nothing to do with the violence. Crazy people are out here that will blow up a building because they got some signal from a commercial about cheese. Yeah. Like crazy people, crazy. Somebody ain't gonna hear no, like that's the average general public that's out here walking the street is not about to go out and go start fighting transgender people and beating on transgender people just because they heard a joke the crazy people that were already geared toward and predisposed and doing that are going to keep on doing it now they may use this as a justification as they would Mm. any other weird thing that they want to tie to their manifesto because these days you can tie anything to your agenda if you really want to the spin machine is ridiculous but what we can't keep doing is having this one group tell everybody you can't say shit if it don't agree exactly with what we believe. That's stupid. Now, I'm down with equal rights for every single person walking this earth. I truly believe that if you are a breathing human being, you should have the same rights as me. What I do not believe is that I have to agree with what you say that you are. If you come to me and tell me you're a kumquat, I can call you kumquat to respect your wishes because I can respect you as a person enough to do that. I have no problem with that. What I do not have to do, though, is myself believe that you are a kumquat when I look at you and see you are a grown human being. And that's basically the biggest issue with this whole thing. You can't keep lumping general public people who just agree with what words mean. Biologically, in the scientific community, there are words that refer to what the sex of a creature of any species that is a creature that has two sex. Like they have that for a reason because it this 
it, there are distinguishable characteristics on a genetic chromosomal and phenotypical level that are there. It, it's it's not absurd for a person to still see people as men and women. That's not crazy. That doesn't mean that they hate you. That doesn't mean that they don't, they don't think you should exist. What they do, they don't have to agree with you. That's not hurting you. What's what we what need to focus on. Calls you? Like, but but this is my thing. Fuck <laughs> all that. It, that. That's that's the problem. We keep they keep what? trying to make the argument about people you don't believe in us, and by that, then you agree with the people that are hurting us. No, no. Let's focus like on the people that are actually out <laughs> here beating on in, on you first, and anybody else that's getting beat on. I don't like when people beat on Asians for no reason. I don't like when people beat on my own black people for no reason. I don't like when people beat up gay people for no reason, or trans people, or any other group, because I think all of that shit is sick. But let's focus on those crazies that are actually doing that instead of lumping everyone who doesn't agree with your ideology or the way you see the world and the definitions that you've met, that you put on words that already have a definition that everybody else is going by. You can't do that. Because then what happens is you shut out a whole swath of people that could actually be your allies because we actually agree with you on the right step, mm -hmm. on the your right to live, your right to not be harassed, your right to not be able to walk down the street and not have somebody come up and try to do harm to you just because you believe what you believe. But you can't change the definition of a word and make me agree with that. If I've already said, okay, I'm gonna call you a woman because you think you're a woman, you want you feel like that's what you are, cool. I'll call you that. I don't have to believe that that's what you are. And I think that's the problem. Like we keep lumping in beliefs like this shit is fact. No, that's what you believe you are. That's what you feel as though you are. That's your essence, cool. That's I what you be. Feel, but that's what you feel. Facts are different. You can't get but you, and that's that's it. A fact, a fact doesn't ever change. A feeling facts will don't give with a the fuck about blows. feelings, man. Facts there are people out here who have feelings. bleached their skin and say that they are white because that's what they feel that they are. Respect to them, that's what you feel. Okay, I truly and honestly believe you had a right to do that. I don't have to look at your black <laughs> ass that just looks white bleached but you still have the phenotypical features of a black person and i don't have to in my mind say sam and Sosa that yes you are now a white person that's what you feel that's respect to what you too. feel but to me mm. i'm still in my brain gonna see you as a black person that don't make me a bad person that don't make me wrong just like you if i tell you that i am the king of zamunda you you might say i right, peace king what up king that's cool just to respect the fact that I feel that way. That don't mean that you look at me as some sovereign ruler of an imaginary nation. It just means that I that's believe, what I feel and you've respected my right to feel that way. And we move on. I believe on. there's plants on other planets. He has yet to believe me yet. And we're brothers. And I respect his right to believe Dang. that despite his lack of evidence. He has the right to believe that. And I have the right to disagree with it. And we can both coexist very peacefully. And hilariously. Makes this country so great. Like, I'm all down for equal rights. We can't impress our beliefs on folk, man. Like, I'm a Christian. I don't think that just because somebody else is Muslim that they fucked up or that they deserve to be hurt or that anything is bad about them or nothing. It's just they don't believe what I believe. Right on. Respect. It's a belief. We both believe something. We feel something. That it, That's not a tangible thing. I have a hot take. And it Sorry. just shuts down the whole conversation, man. We can't even have a real conversation about the real fucked up shit because we keep deferring it to this dumb shit that, that, that's not even the real it's point. your feelings. Your feelings. Your feelings. Not about this. Get some money. Yes, man. Go ahead. So, uh, take Get your hot take, Pat. Hot hot. Remember, remember when Dave said it's not about the LGBTQ community. It's about corporate interests or whatever. Bingo! All right. ding, 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 I I start I start going down the rabbit. All right. So also in the closer, you know that um that example he had where the the big white dude that became a woman or whatever he started being in the face. We go through stuff, honey. And then the other black dudes are on the side, like uh y'all wanna? And he's like y'all wanna tell him something or whatever. And then <clears throat> and then. That one point where they thought the white dude was going to, well, the white dude that became a woman was going to actually fight him. And then they called the police. I just, 
I almost feel like he might be sticking to something. It might be a little bit closer to home, that example, or whatever. Like, he noticed a pattern. He noticed a pattern, especially around the, the corporate like high status people around him and everything and then that's when he started to have more and more examples because it's a i will say this it's a lot of times there's a good period in history and dave did bring it up where us minorities be fighting for for privileged people that's a little bit more privileged than us they might not be as privileged as white men but a little bit more privileged than us to get their rights before we even get any and then when we say something we're just angry you know what i'm saying um when he was talking about sojourner truth or whatever and they they invited her to the feminist movement because they know front line of defense when it comes to fighting for equality black people are the front line of defense because like i said before we can't we can't we can't take this off we don't put our minority on we don't dress up in the mirror without and and figure out how our more minority is going to look appealing today and or whatever. That's, and that's the I'm glad you brought up that sojourner truth that's uh, thing. part. People forget yep. he's a layered artist. So the way he mm -hmm. sets up his jokes is they all interlock to form a complete narrative that closes a loop at the end. So you have to pay attention to the setup jokes in the beginning. Because mm -hmm. the main point that he makes at the end is always reflected in each of those jokes. So even in this, so each joke he made was driving home the point of stop punching down on my people because we are actually willing to ally with you if you actually stop of uh, like weaponizing everything against us oh. because we disagree on a belief. We are with you on your rights and. We don't even got our shit and we sitting here taking bullets for y'all. But then for you sit there and attack us because we don't kowtow to everything Pe you believe. On top of Pe that, this. I'm mm -hmm. tired of y'all having the corporate ear and using that against everybody because that's getting Pe old too. That's why I said, that's why they said they're starting to act like the oppressors they claim they're against. Because yeah, now I want to say, when, when I said earlier, we tend to end up fighting for other people's privilege. Yeah, they are now, it seems like more and more fighting for privileged white men that claim they're gay. Mm -hmm. That's it. It always is. They don't, they don't, they don't care. Like you, you don't realize you fighting for that. Like the guy that you fighting against is actually fighting for y'all a little bit more than what you realize. Like you, you gonna fight for all these white men that's mad that they don't have the privilege that minorities have of complaining i don't even want to say complaining stating the fuckeries that we have against us or whatever they yeah. want all the privilege or whatever so yeah. now y'all putting yourselves in the front line risking your jobs um risking your reputations and all that so you can because you feel like it's going to be fun to make a ruckus in front of a corporate building you can feel like you got a rush out of it for that moment right. and what did you achieve Cause he already got paid. So even if, even if they canceled the closer, even, even if they take all his stuff off, he still got paid for it. So you're not stopping him. And if Netflix says, Hey, we're not going to deal with Dave no more. I'm pretty sure HBO max and the rest of them is just waiting for this Netflix things to boil over so they can pick them back up because they know that controversy it's going to bring something. And the thing with him, table. man, you can't cancel him because he's got the it people. They will go set up in the middle of a fucking abandoned lot somewhere and will make and will have thousands of people flying from all over the world to come see a show just he popped up. Like he's at that level. So it's like right. he don't really need like he can go direct to consumer, set up a little quick website and put and put out a YouTube video saying that he got this on sale and people going to buy it. So like. It's really nothing that they can do to him other and than Caitlyn either Jenner. use him as an ally or just let him be him. And Caitlyn Jenner defends Dave Chappelle and says he's 100% right. I'm not using that as, hey, if she's, you know what I'm saying? But once again... That's the thing, though. Again, he says a lot of the transgender people that he actually knows and talks to, they not mad at him. Mm -hmm. I think it's these corporate people that are mad because their interests are involved and they see a line where they can get things that they wanted to get done anyway. They can hype and they can their agenda onto this 
and let's and ride this way so we can out. get our shit pushed through. It's the same thing they do in it, Congress. They wait till the Black Lives Matter movement pop up, and then they try to slide their little fuck shit into the the little different bills uh-huh. that everybody trying to get passed, and then the shit get hung up because people catch it. Like it's the same same bullshit. The power yeah. structure want to do one thing, and the every man don't. But they gonna still try to force their way through. That's really what this is. It's corporate interest trying to latch their agendas onto an issue that ain't even a real issue with the real people on the ground that's dealing with. The real issue is getting transgenders equal rights and making sure that they're not out here getting attacked and harmed and abused and harassed for just being them. That's what it is. It ain't about who believe you what. It's about do I respect your right to live as a human as you respect mine? And can I leave you the fuck alone and let you live your damn life? Do the fuck you want to do. I don't give a fuck. Do the exactly. fuck you want to do. I'm going to do what you want to do. Live your life. Equal rights. We all fight for the exact same shit. Equal fuck. But we all, for some reason, can't get back on that civil rights movement. It's so fractured in this disc group, in this disc group, in this group where everybody wants the same shit because you got LGBT people getting killed by police too just because they're LGBTQ, whatever else they want to put in. No disrespect to the movie, but I don't know all the levels. But then you got black people getting killed. You also got Mexican people getting killed. You got all minority groups going through the same shit. We highlight ours because we know about ours. They highlight theirs because they know about theirs. Get y'all ass on the same fucking boat and fight the main objective and the main people. You feel me? It's one main enemy, but that main enemy is so smart and so powerful. He's making all these little subgroups fight each other. And we don't see it. We all want the same exact thing. Equality. It ain't about race. It ain't about your sex. Because at the end of the day, the majority of people don't give a fuck about all these main, these minor human main categories. Mm-hmm. The one main thing that matters is financial equality. Financial equality, economic stability on all levels. All the poor folks got the same shit in common. We got more shit in common than the rich, than we do with the rich folks. But the rich folks know that, so they make it about something else. Well, we'll make it about mm-hmm. race, and then we'll have them all fighting. Yep. Well, we'll mm-hmm. sit back and we'll see all the money. Nah, motherfucker, it's about race. It's about the money, man. Oh, see, that's you the thing, see though. I also, I also peep too. I'm glad you said that. I also peep how like the more that society gets away from hating each other about race, and it's like more like, and we don't care what race you are. Now it's trying to now it's starting to be about what gender or what sex you are or what your sexual orientation and all that. Now it's let's get them arguing about that. Oh, they oh the race ain't working no more, guys. We need a new one. Oh, look, this has even more groups than the races, guys. We can we can just keep on adding new groups and have them fighting let, each other forever. Let me let me tell y'all right now. Let me let me say this right now. I don't care how you fuck it. That's your damn business. I don't want to hear nothing about it. I don't I don't like public displays of affection. Like I don't like I don't like when the heterosexual co- um couple be all hugged up and kissing in front of everybody or whatever. You know, like, man, this is the thing yeah, for me, man. Take this home. As long, I don't like that around. I, I look at life like even with people, <clears throat> it's like anything else. Depends on the time and the place. If I'm out with me and my wife, I treat it just like I would a TV show. If I don't feel like seeing some people fucking, I just look my ass the other way. Most people ain't fucking out on the street anyway. So I I, I don't think I've ever encountered anybody just screwing out in the public, at least not normal in my normal right. everyday goings about unless, lately. Unless you're going to the but, one of them crazy parades. Right. But, but, get but even at the parade, but, I, but that's what I'm saying. It's like TVs. Like if I'm at a restaurant and I see some people over there kissing or something, I don't want to see. I don't have to look. Yeah. So that, I'm just, just saying, bringing brother, that up. Mm-hmm. What'd you say, Faye? I want to repeat what he said. He's never seen what? People out there just fucking, at least not in my regular everyday life lately, you know, as a grown up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I ain't talking I about crazy imagine. college days or no wild shit like that. Where you, you know, I was, I was little, I'm more, I'm more I talking about, crazy. like, you know, the, the average street corner, like the average day you walking through Walmart, you ain't about to just see heterosexuals just screwing. So you damn it, you less likely to see just a random group of LGBTQI people just like, so it's like this, the shit that people be having in their mind, like it ain't really that deep. Like let them do what they do. And if you don't like, if you don't want to see them kiss, turn your head. Like, I don't like to see 
Like Pat was saying, I agree. I don't like to see other couples kissing, to be honest. I, unless it's me kissing my wife, I don't really care about seeing you kiss. So I don't necessarily want to see that. I turn my head with that. I want to I want to ask a question. Even I heard somebody ask a question the other day, and I don't remember who it was, so I don't want to fuck it up by saying the wrong name. But the question is, excuse me, back in the day, they used to say telling jokes and telling jokes about violence and showing violence on TV and shit like that was normalizing it, right? Uh huh. But they don't say telling jokes about trans people is normalizing that. Well, I why, think why is telling jokes so much different about this group? You feel me? Like if you want equality, take it to the chin, like every other group does. A white joke to me is the same thing as a trans joke. See, I think that, I think that there are people that are saying that. Like I've heard that argument that this uptick in having exposure about those communities are normalizing it for other people. That's kind of where the fuck your kids comment came from is because people like boosting it was like, hey, I don't want to see all this in the media. Da, 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 da. I don't want to see it in public. Da, da, da. But I think the, the thing is, it's not going to be illuminated to us as much as people who are, you know, heterosexual like that, just because that ain't necessarily the side we like. You always going to hear more of the thing that either is opposing to your general viewpoint or is like not the thing that you normally think anyway. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's going to stand out to you more. I feel like that's the thing. Like they, like the transgender community is going to hear more stuff. They're going to hear less of the people that are saying, Hey, we, 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 we want y'all to have y'all rights. We believe y'all should have equal rights too. We just, we, we just might not be what you are like, and that's okay. Like I, 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 they are less likely to hear that. They're more likely to hear somebody who is being violent to them or who's calling them derogatory terms or who's trying to harass them. And we the same way. We're more likely to hear the opposing viewpoints because they're going to stand out more to us and they're going to register us because they're not our normal thinking path. Especially with the way algorithms and social media is set up. Indeed. It is set up to bring things to you that will upset you because you're more likely to respond or react to a post that will piss you off mm -hmm. or excite some type of emotion right than just something that would actually bring you joy or it makes you happy for a moment pretty much yeah the internet's gonna feed you one way or the other they're gonna give you shit that you definitely hate or shit that you definitely love they gonna but they're gonna evoke try to evoke a strong reaction out of you and right there's now. a lot of clout chasers that will use any situation. Oh, y'all up y'all gonna be upset about this. I'm gonna find any old thing so I can get my name out there. Cause if I am the blogger, the journalist, the um, the one comedian that can actually or whatever that can bring down Dave Chappelle, then I'm gonna be the shit, basically. And I would also like to say that Dave Chappelle is right with one more thing. Um, and I had to do a little bit of research before I just straight up said he, I agree with them, but okay. Hannah Gatsby. No, she is more, she is more performance art. Mm -hmm. It's more like a Ted talk, but yeah. there is not funny. There's little funny it's moments. It's not funny. She's more of a but, story. She's more of a speaker. Yeah. It's like, she's trying to, all right. Chappelle can do what she did. But it's going to be jokes. It's going to be, even if he's not even trying to be serious, ser the way he says it and the way he says it and the way he comes across it, it's going to sound funny or whatever. With her, I feel like I'm listening to an activist the whole mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I'm listening, I'm like, all right, y'all seen the TED Talk, right? Even in the TED Talk, you may have like little funny moments or whatever. But that's not intended in the TED Talk. That's just something to light the little breeze in between me saying all this random information that might be over your head. Let's light it up so you can soak that in or whatever. That's how I feel with her. But the thing is, you're not supposed to have TED Talk jokes. If you're a comedian, you're supposed to have comedian <laughs> jokes <laughs> or whatever. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm in a lecture. The whole point of me listening to a comedian is so I can get away from all the anxiety and stress of my normal day life and laugh at it, not cry over it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely, you know I saying? definitely feel you on it. It's definitely, it's definitely a little bit heavy handed 
I'm not saying don't say how you feel because I will never be the person to say that or whatever. But you're going to have to, you're giving me false advertisement or whatever. I'm not saying don't ever say uh, what you're against, uh, what you feel is a bad thing. You know, if you see an injustice, I'm not saying that, but you can't label comedy over something that's not com like this it's not comedy it's like jokes it's just there's no jokes and it. it's just light-hearted in-betweens until i start to spew what i'm gonna vent about here you know some people when they vent it's funny me for example if i'm pissed off i'd be literally pissed off but people find it hilarious face being one of them <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it is whatever maybe it's the way i inflect the way i say stuff Blah blah blah. <laughs> this should be funny, isn't it? <laughs> See? See what I mean? I, I'm not just lying. I'm not I'm not just saying here. It. You know, I, it's a slight Richard Pryor syndrome where I'm trying to be serious and it still comes out funny. Okay. And there's some people that can't do that. They they can't just be mad and it turns out funny. You know, some people try to like rant and be angry or whatever, and because they seen somebody else rant and it looked funny or whatever. No, you can't do that. No, it's got to be a natural thing, man. And um, I know that was a rant about it, but yeah, I was expecting jokes, man, not to cry. <laughs> sometimes we laugh, sometimes we cry, and you know now, baby. Oh, that was, man. Someone's at home crying alone in the bedroom floor because he's hungry. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt when I was listening to that so-called comedy special, man. <laughs> I agree with the stuff she was saying. I I just wanted to laugh though. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't you don't get a you don't go to a mechanic, man. You don't go to a mechanic to make a sandwich. This is true. You don't. You don't you don't go to a fast food place to get your car fixed. That would be more convenient though. It would be very convenient, especially if they actually got it fixed in that time. The drive through time would be out the chain, seriously. Yeah. But but yeah, it just don't happen like that, man. And yeah, I don't know who she's funny to, but God bless them. I'm glad she's funny to them. Hey, man, everything ain't for everybody. Yeah, that hey. wasn't for me. <laughs> time they be tripping. They be tripping. They be tripping. All the time. Oh, the motherfucker. <laughs> but yeah, that was my rant. <laughs> ain't nothing, ain't nothing. But yeah, man, I... In closing, man, Chappelle, I stand with you, stands, and not necessarily even technically on every single aspect of your argument, but more on your stance as far as why you having the right to stand on stand on the fact that you can't keep pushing people away from us if you want us to be your ally. At some point, you gotta allow us to like be your ally, and that doesn't mean agree on it means that we respect each other regardless i don't understand everything about everybody in my family but i want them you know and i think that's how we got to look at it. yeah man Chappelle, you have not been so i'm definitely going to be trying to pick up tickets when he come to atlanta for the movie premiere yeah man if i, I do i'll definitely blog for yeah and he's supposed to have a new show coming out so i'm not right. mad also uh <laughs> check out his interview he did with david Lee. yeah that uh from a long time ago I don't know how long oh, is it, a new it is, one? but it's it popped up on my feed recently, so I don't know how old it is, but it's, um, I think I've seen it before. Yeah, because Letterman was doing a whole bunch of interviews. They did it when they were far when Letterman had that big ass beard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He good. did. It's good because he did Obama too. It was during the pandemic. Yeah, it's definitely within the past year or two. Very good material. Very good. Now, um, since we're somewhat on the topic. Um, like I was already mentioned when we were talking about the community and the black movement. Um, I want to reference black movements right now and the the they culture. Um, every time it's an uproar or we're on an upheaval, I should say, and we're making gains, it's always a they that comes out of nowhere, and it's like a a they are pitted or some other movement is pitted against the black movement, and, and it's like almost a competition the they makes it looks like but my first thing mm -hmm. is who the fuck is the they now in the 60s and 70s we found out that they was actually the government um with the cointel pro program um <clears throat> in their own mission statement it was proven that they were actually targeting 
the black community and black movements and so-called black messiahs that could get black militant groups in an uproar or get them in in together. So they were actually them. You know, but everyone is still using the they in the media they use the they in conversations with the they. Um and even in the in the conversations of the the community versus any any black movement, um, it's a they. Now they're not even they're um they're separating or trying to make black movements separate them, themselves. They're calling the Black Lives Matter movement one movement. No, that's not a movement. That's just a statement. Black lives matter. If it were like <laughs> we're just letting you know our lives matter as well, but we still want equal rights. Right. That's the main thing. And the so-called they, I, I, I'm I'm trying to figure out who is the they. I was watching the interview the other day um, in reference to the Dave Chappelle backlash, and they had Richard Pryor's old bodyguard up there. I've and seen that too. The, and the interviewer kept referencing they. He was like, "Who is they?" I like, can right. he was like, "Can anybody tell me who this they is? This mystical they everyone keeps referencing. No one can name the who they are. But like, can you name them? Can you name a person in the in this they? No one can." But we can always reference just that. They did this. They, they're doing this. There is no they. The media constructs that. There is a, there's a they. The media is the outlet or the outlets to put the information out there to continue to feed. You feel me? Continue to feed the uproar and the, the divisions. As long as there's division, there will always be a greater good, a greater bad. There will never be equality as long as there's division. But when there is unity, there can be equality. I think the day, I think the problem is the day shifts depending on the conversation. Like when we're talking about Dave Chappelle versus the trans community, we're talking about if he's talking, he's talking about the day as in the people, the corporate and economical powerhouses and juggernaut kowtow to the special interests of this particular group while ignoring the special interests of all of these other press groups. Um, who kind of had a leg in the game earlier. Um, I think if you're talking about Black people in general, I think that they is the global power structure that allowed the slave trade to be enacted in the first place with the power structure of capitalism um, and other economic systems like that that are basically ran off of the theory of a specific group being more well-off than the general. Um, if you're talking about a Patriots fan, then the they would be Tom Brady pissed at him. So it's like, I, I think the they shifts, but um, I do like the question because I think that's one thing that's very important. I think the problem is we've gotten so used to generalizing all of these arguments and lumping everything in. I think it, it is a time, especially now that we have so many people quote unquote woke that are waking up to a different plight that we start being more specific with our arguments. Like if we really want some change, we can't just keep saying, well, they know, say, I want the police in this area to stop doing this. Not, I want them to stop doing, th like who the, cause you can't attack them. You can't put restrictions on them. You can't make a law that stops them from doing something, but you can make a law that stops a specific group from doing something. You can make a law that stops hate crimes against certain groups. You can make laws that allow certain allowances for groups, but you can't help they. You can't fight against they. It's nothing you can do with they. So I definitely like the idea of being specific and really having a detailed ask to make things a movement. Because I like also like that comment they say about Black Lives Matter not being a movement. Like, a statement is a statement. The only way something becomes a movement is if you put some action behind it. Like it's literally in the word movement. There has to be some some actual tangible growth or progression made toward a certain end. It can't just be we just mad. Okay, you mad. So what you gonna do about it? You know what I mean? So, but yeah, that's my take. I think that's the funny thing about they. You, it's impossible to put a, a finger on they because they make it impossible. If, if who was they? Yeah, exactly. It, it wouldn't be, it's the same, the same people Dave is talking about, the same people we may imagine it be. It's like whoever controls a certain amount of, that's in a certain tax bracket that controls uh, the most of the economy, you know, that, that bracket, like 
if if it's anything that's a thing but really it's not like it's a humans are not evolved enough to have one singular group control everything and not be exposed like it's impossible people you get it to a certain tax bracket your ego gets into play you start feeling like all right i done this and this and it shifts certain things in the world not just where i'm at in the world that blows your head you know that it you start feeling like you should pl- put your place in history and You're things hungry. like that and power hungry exactly like it's it's way the only thing close to it is people finding general interest with the stuff that they like to do and want to make sure that they stay doing it but the only way they can stay doing it if other people don't so as long as there's people out there that still want to do fuckery behind on behind closed doors and in in the and in the dark or whatever that's your thing but that that could be human nature you know what i'm saying they is us us is they he is i and i is chicken 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 slim with the tilted brim on 20 inch (laughs) rims what yeah we've had two illuminati we've had two jigger references they the day is the illuminati dynasty but i definitely think the day man is whoever it is that is in power over the person that is seeing that because usually yep. when you start to say that they, it's because the power that's over you is seemingly so big or overwhelming that it's hard to even put a finger on a specific person. It's an entity. So, but we do have to start naming these entities so we can actually properly address them. Otherwise, he gets to keep on being the day in the shadow. Wow. I also think it's time to focus more on the us instead of the day. We do spend a lot of time focused on day, but then us is still not right. And the mm-hmm. only right. truth to get us on the page to make sure us we all are equal we don't want no more we don't want no less we want the exact same equal not greater than less than equal to that's what we want man to give me the same afford me the same you feel me don't make quality and peace man don't give me the dirty shit you got the brand new shit Give me the same. If you can't afford two brand news, get two old dirty ones. If we both two have two old dirty ones, that's what I'm talking about. Equal. Old oh, dirty. We also want to be Equal. left the fuck alone. Yeah. Equity, give us equality, shit, and peace. And leave us the fuck alone. Make sure we, we all have access to the y'all. same shit. Make sure we have the same shit. And make sure we all have the right. Think I want to live near your neighborhood? No. Just give us, leave us the hell alone. <laughs> Yeah, they leave us alone. This is my thing. It ain't your neighborhood. You may own a house, but it's you earth. own them. It's earth, man. No man has domain over what God has created. This is all man shit. We all adhere to this man shit. Get your mind right, man. If we all adhere to something yeah. totally different, then what? You keep allowing these people to show you what equality really is and dangling it in front of your damn faces. And pitting you against each other like rats in a competition, like in a race battling for some fucking cheese, and we all battling for the same damn thing. That's how to work in the government. We all need it. to say fuck that cheese and go get us a steak. You feel I'm me? Like toast intolerant anyway. Teamwork make a dream work. Dang, just a slogan, goddamn it. It's real life. Right, that's big fat. That's big fat. Shit. It works for you us. Can, you could be a finger or you could be a fist. That fist stronger than yeah, right. Pokemon stuck in the eye. You can knock you can ass punch their ass the fuck out and give them two black ass. And then you'll realize you should have left them the fuck alone. <laughs> like I said earlier. But yeah, that's the day, man. We got to focus on us. And I tell you wow. one thing about us. If y'all want to focus on us, there's a beautiful few ways. That you, you can mm. always send a lovely financial to dollars. Or you can always subscribe to our Anchor podcast uh, and support the podcast there. Or you can sign up for a membership or donate on buymeacoffee.com backslash the partner where you can get signed up for a membership for $4.99. And with that, you would get back exclusive backstage access to us via our uh, partners discord. You would get unedited videos, exclusive access to all of the podcasts. So you see everything nobody else sees. You have members only events. 
uh, giveaways, promo codes that only you will be able to get for our merchandise. And again, that's at buymeacoffee.com. It's the partner. For as little as a dollar, you can sign up for a membership for $4.99. You can also be a subscriber for $4.99 on Anchor, or you can send us a cash on a dollar sign partner tiers on Cash App. Now, y'all remember them promo codes? I was Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go to something. Face, if I get one of them promo codes, what do I get access to? Well, you can get access to a whole slew of things if you go to artreyclothing.com. Once again, that's artreyclothing.com. Very simple to spell. A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. You can go get your partner's merchandise. You can go get your Artre merchandise. You can go get a hoodie starting and get chilly. You can go get a sweatshirt trying to get chilly. You can go get a hat. You can go get a canvas bag. You can go get some throw pillows for your, for your couch, for your bed. You can you can go got get socks and phone bag. cases. You can get socks. You can get phone cases. We got a couple of almost everything you can want and need right about now. And all With different colors, colors and combinations. All the time. You feel me? We got different colors and combinations on the page. Go through, go toggle. Go, go, see. go toggle. We got some mint and white things coming out. I like the color mint for this for this for this winter coming out. This mint and white stuff. I, I'm gonna get down with it myself. So check us out, man. Artreclothing.com. Once again, A R T R E Clothing.com, baby. Indeed, man. Go check us out. And if you want to get more access or information, you want to hit us up. You want to communicate with us, Pat. How can they get in touch with us outside of the podcast? Uh, we have an Instagram, we have a TikTok, we have a uh, Twitter, and we also have a Facebook at T H E P O D N A S. And that's with the TikTok, the Instagram, the Twitter. Uh, it's also the Facebook. We also have a second Facebook, Tis Face Pat are the partners. And you can message us there. Uh, we also have the live show. We're going to start that back up pretty soon. You didn't ask us, but. Uh, if y'all got videos y'all want us to react to, send it to any one of our social medias, but not at T H E P O D N A S. Indeed. And if you forgot everything all three of us just told you, don't worry, we got you. Just go to thepodnas.com, T H E P O D N A S dot com, and you can get access to all of the donation information, the subscription information, the social media accounts, the live shows, the videos, the podcasts the merch, anything you looking for, it's right there, one-stop shop, thepodness.com. You see it on your screen there, access to everything. Just go there, the click of a button, you there. So um, yeah, man, if you ever uh, looking to do that, those are the ways to get in touch with us and uh, get access to all of our things. And um, I think this is a good place to leave it, guys. Um, yeah, y'all be blessed this week. Um, we hope to bring the live show back this week, uh, but we're going to see what scheduling look like and whatnot. Uh, this coming week is a bit of a hectic one here, um, especially mm-hmm. for your boy. So um, we'll see what happens with that. But um, we love y'all. Thank y'all for continuing to rock with us, Pod Squad. And as always, I have been one third of the pod, the partner. Your boy Tiz. And I'm along with. Oh, uh, your favorite neighborhood superhero with no superpowers. The Padawan here. I can draw real good, though. And I'm along with Dramatic Pause. One thing, and it's your man facing the place. Thank y'all for coming. Could have been anywhere, but you came here with us. Peace out. We love y'all. Indeed, man. Love y'all. See y'all again next week. And I uh, hope y'all are. We about this thing, y'all. Zip it Three weeks to a year. Three weeks to a year. Zip it in and zip it out. I'm about to go.